Hey everybody, so I had meant for the previous video in this radar series to be the last one, but I've received a lot of great feedback on that video and that made me want to try a few more things that we could do or improve on this setup. So that's what this video is. And specifically, I wanna cover three things. First, I'll use MTI processing to eliminate ground clutter. And this is really gonna highlight the drone. Secondly, I wanna try this in a bigger field. My goal was to be able to see a small drone at about 100 meters away. So I've moved to a bigger space uh, and I'm also gonna try out a new antenna and a new transmit amplifier. So I'll show you what that looks like uh, and what those results are. And then finally, and perhaps most exciting is I have a way for you to try out some of this radar signal processing at home. So even if you don't have a Pluto or a Phaser or any radar hardware, you will be able to experiment with the drone data that you'll see in this video. And I'm hoping you will figure out some new things or, or maybe correct something that I've done and then let me know about it. If a few people respond, I'll publish their suggestions in a new video, and of course, give credit and shout out to uh, all those that contributed. So first, let's start with this MTI processing thing. My friend, Dr. Matt Ritchie from University College London saw my last video and commented that I should try MTI processing. And I said, I would love to do that. Just tell me what it is and how do I do it? So he ran through it with me and it really does make a huge improvement. And before I describe what it is and how it works, let me just show you the results of applying it. So this is the same drone and the data from the previous video. And this is the range Doppler plot of that. And you can kind of see the drone, but you also see all this ground clutter. But now if we apply an MTI filter, a lot of that ground clutter is eliminated, but things that move are not attenuated at all. So the drone stands out quite a bit more. So that is very cool. And of course the question is, how does that work? How do we apply it? So let's get into that. First, what is MTI? MTI stands for Moving Target Indicator, and the goal of MTI radar processing is to enhance the detection of moving targets by eliminating everything that is not moving. MTI processing is also known as Pulse Doppler Radar because it is using the Doppler shift in frequency from moving targets in order to distinguish them. Some also call it Coherent Charge Detection. You'll see this in Dr. Gregory Charvat's book, Small and Short Range Radar. But Two Pulse Canceller is also a common way to refer to MTI processing. And this one I kind of like the most because it explains exactly what we're doing. So let's see how we do MTI and also why I like to call it two pulse canceller. So in the last video, we saw the advantage of transmitting multiple chirps and then keeping track of those chirps. And then we ordered those chirps into columns. So the MTI filter is a very simple change to this. We just subtract the time domain received signal from the previous pulse. If the target is stationary, the signals will be nearly identical, resulting in a difference close to zero. So these targets will be largely canceled out. If the target is moving, the signals will differ due to their Doppler shift, and so they will not be canceled out. And here's what that looks like. We're just subtracting two consecutive chirps. So subtracting the first two chirps gives a new chirp that I'm calling chirp 2P. Then we slide to the next chirp and subtract those. And we keep doing this for all the pulses in the CPI, the coherent processing interval. So hopefully calling this a two pulse canceller kind of makes sense now. And we don't have to stop at two pulses. We can do another round of pulse cancellation and get to a three pulse canceller. And this is what that looks like. There's a lot more detail that could be gone into here, but instead I'm just going to direct you to this Lincoln Laboratories online radar class. I've referenced this online radar course before, but let me draw attention to it again. It's a free online course with both videos and presentations from Dr. Robert O'Donnell at MIT Lincoln Labs. Dr. O'Donnell passed away in 2015 but a few years prior to that, he made this series of videos to help others in this field. And they are still fantastic today. And in particular, check out Lecture 8 entitled Signal Processing MTI and Pulse Doppler Techniques. He did a great job covering all the basics, and there's really no sense in me trying to redo what he did so perfectly. So check out those lectures if you want to understand more about MTI processing and also cover some of the caveats to it, like blind speeds. Okay, so now how do we implement this in our Python code? Again, you can find this example code on my GitHub page, um, and there's really not much to say here. We're just subtracting two chirps and creating a new array from those subtracted chirps. The only thing I'll add is that I found that this subtraction worked better if I first phase aligned the two chirps. So I do a quick correlation to get the phase offset, and then I shift one of the chirps by that offset. I hadn't seen that done anywhere, so I don't totally know if this is the absolute right thing to do, but it made sense to me and it did seem to improve my results. And, and here's what those results look like. So again, the top plot is with no MTI filtering on it at all. 
and then the two pulse canceller is in the middle. And you can see that the transmit leakage and ground clutter are significantly attenuated, but the drone retains its full signal amplitude. And then on the bottom, I've added what the three pulse canceller looks like, and here the ground clutter is completely eliminated. However, of course, a downside to MTI is that when the drone is stationary, then you won't be able to see it. But you will see the micro Doppler signature from the propeller blades. So in the case of a quadcopter, you might be able to just use that. Although keep in mind that the propeller blades are a much smaller reflection than the drone body. So now let's use this MTI processing as we try to get further range from this phaser radar setup. When I started this project, I was hoping to be able to see this tiny drone at least 100 meters away. Now, a professional higher power radar might be able to see something like this a couple kilometers away. But for my simple setup, I wanted to be able to do at least 100 meters. So to test this out, I took my setup to a park that had about 110 meters of open space. And you can see that setup here. But I also wanted to change out the transmit antenna. The antenna that I used last time was a Pasternak PE9856 expand horn antenna. It's a fantastic antenna uh, and you can read the specs online but it costs around $1,000. And I was hoping to find something that might be a little bit more accessible to everyone. So uh, I want to thank Robert Bowling for pointing me to an X-band antenna that is normally used for communications with amateur radio satellites. I'll put a link to this antenna on eBay. I got this antenna for about $100. And with each antenna, this seller also measures the S11 and prints out a plot for you. So that is uh, very valuable to know. And as I've used it in my setup, it seems fairly comparable in gain to the Pasternak. So I set all of this up in the park, and here's what the range stopper plots look like with that antenna. And then if we apply a two pulse canceller, here's what that looks like. So overall, this is pretty decent. Uh, you can actually see the drone from about 100 meters away, but I still wanted to see if I could improve the range even further or, or at least increase the return signal. So I added an HMC451 amplifier. Uh, it's a good amplifier that provided me with about 22 dB of gain. So now my transmit power is around 100 milliwatts. Uh, and here's what that looks like. You can see that the return is a bit better, though when the target is close to the radar, there is quite a bit of saturation. I, I just have a fixed gain on the receiver. I could probably do something smarter to avoid this, but it's good enough for now. So overall, I was pretty pleased with that performance. I can see this small plastic drone from about 100 meters away, and certainly the amplifier and MTI processing help a lot with that. But as a bonus, I've saved all of this data. So the raw IQ data coming out of Phaser is all saved. And that means that even if you don't have a Phaser or a Pluto or any radar hardware, you can still play around with trying out some of these radar processing algorithms. And I really hope that you do that. There's a lot that you can try out. Um, and you can try to figure out something that I haven't done. For example, you could apply CFAR to the range stopper plot, or you could do a range normalization scheme. Um, that, would, that would probably be an easy one if you want to try that out first. Or you could do some other kind of clutter suppression algorithm. There's, there's just a whole bunch of stuff that you could do. Uh, or maybe you're a teacher and you want an exercise that you could do with your class. Uh, this could make for a fun project. So I'll put a link to where I've uploaded that data. And then if you go to my GitHub link, you'll see a new Python file called Range Doppler Processing. So just put in the name of the data you downloaded, and then this script will do the Range Doppler and MTI processing. But from there, please edit and implement something new or correct something that I've done wrong. I would not be surprised if there are a few mistakes in some of these files. And if you do find something, reach out to me and let me know. If I get enough replies, I'll do a new video uh, with all that feedback, and I'll give credit and shout outs to, uh, to those that sent me those, those improvements or, or those new ideas. Uh, and then we can all learn this new stuff together. So please check that out and let me know if you figure out something that's cool. But uh, that's it for this video. Uh, thanks again for watching.